Hello and welcome to the Alaska Weather Show. My name is Carrie Hazley and I am the Chief of the National Weather Service Alaska's Emergency Services and Multimedia Branch. You may have noticed that the Alaska Weather Show has been off the air for the last several days and we're excited to begin producing the show once again. Just like folks all around Alaska and all around the world, the National Weather Service Alaska team is committed to slowing the spread of the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. Most of our employees are now working from home, following guidelines to practice social distancing. This allows us to adequately spread out our team members who continue to work in offices, producing the weather forecasts and warnings Alaskans depend on. The show will look a bit different to you in the days ahead because the TV team is now producing the show from our porches, from our living rooms, and from our spare bedrooms. Some of the maps will look different than those that you are used to seeing, but we will continue to build up our remote capability and improve the TV program. I hope that you will stick with us as we learn a completely new way of producing the weather show. While there is a lot of uncertainty in the world and in Alaska right now, please know that our commitment to serving the people of this great state with the best weather information we can provide remains unchanged. Thank you for your viewership and please stay safe, fellow Alaskans. Good evening, I'm David Kramer with Alaska Weather. As always, please visit our website, weather.gov slash Alaska. You can get updates to our forecast or check out any watches, warnings, or advisories that we may have out for your area. You can call our weather info line, 1-800-472-0391. Getting updates to the forecast through that means as well. Or you can email me at the address at the bottom of the screen, david.kramer at noaa.gov, and I can answer any of your TV-related questions. Moving on, we'll start off with a quick look at our warnings all along the west coast of the state right now. We'll start with our blizzard warning out over St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait coast. That's going to be out until midnight tonight, so watch out for visibilities dropping down to a quarter mile or less with some strong winds and blowing snow. Down in the Yukon Delta, we have a winter weather advisory out also for snow and blowing snow. That's going to be in effect until midnight tonight as well. And then all along the Norton Sound coast up into the Seward Peninsula, we have winter storm watches that are out for primarily snow, but also some chance for blowing snow in those. Those are going to be in effect Friday afternoon to late Saturday night. As we move further to the north, up towards Ambler and other areas in southwest part of the Brooks Range, we are expecting winter storm watches also in effect for our snow and with the potential for some blowing snow. But those are going to be in effect a little bit later, starting late Friday night until Sunday evening. Taking a look now at our satellite imagery, we can watch from the west. We have a new system coming in, bringing some cloud cover and precipitation to the western and central Aleutian Islands, starting to get some of that cloud cover over the Pribilof Islands as well. We have another system up in the northern part of the Bering Sea that is pushing towards St. Lawrence Island, bringing some cloud cover over the west coast of the state. Then we have a weaker disturbance out near Kodiak Island that's bringing some cloud cover to south central Alaska down into western portions of the Gulf of Alaska to include Kodiak Island. And if we notice out over the Panhandle area, still seeing primarily clear skies under the effects of some high pressure over the area. I'm going to take a look at our weather for the remainder of the day. We'll start out west again. We have a system moving in, bringing some rain to the western Aleutian Islands. Strong push of warm air with that 971 millibar low, bringing in those conditions that can bring some rain to the area. High pressure off further to the east, keeping the areas of the central and eastern Aleutians protected from the precipitation on for today. And then we have our other low up in the northern part of the Bering Sea, bringing some snow to the west coast and the Seward Peninsula to include St. Lawrence Island. We have some isolated areas of snow showers up along the Arctic coastline, down through much of the Brooks Range and central and western portions of the interior, and then low near Kodiak Island, bringing in some precipitation to the Kenai Peninsula and up into the remainder of south central Alaska. It is warm enough along the Gulf Coast to see a transition of snow to rain, and then as we get down by Kodiak Island and the Alaska Peninsula, seeing primarily rain in those locations. Pretty dry out east for the Panhandle area as we have strong high pressure out over the northwestern portions of Canada. For tonight, high pressure continuing out over the Canadian areas, but we do have that low that was over the Kodiak area pushing into the northern part of the Gulf of Alaska, starting to bring some precipitation to the uh, Gulf side of the Panhandle, and that does include Yakutat as well, and other areas along the North Gulf Coast going to see a mix of rain and snow. So to get further inland, we are going to see primarily snow for South Central Alaska and a mix of rain and snow for Kodiak Island. As we move up into the interior, some isolated areas of snow showers in the central and eastern portions, and then snow for much of the Brooks Range as well. For the west coast of the state, some heavier snow is expected for the Seward Peninsula down through the YK Delta area, and some wider snow as we get down into the Bristol Bay area. 
Further west, we do have our system pushing further into the central portions of the Bering Sea, bringing rain up as far north as the Pribilof Islands and down through much of the central and western Aleutian Islands as well. The main low pressure center with this system not moving a whole lot, but we are seeing quite a bit of moisture coming up, being pulled up from the North Pacific. As we move into Friday, that system will finally start to push, or the low center itself will start to push out into the western portions of the Bering Sea, extending its front now over the southwest coastline. A mix of rain and snow is expected for much of southwest Alaska, up through St. Lawrence Island, and starting to make its way towards the Seward Peninsula. Behind the system, still warm enough to have some rain for Pribilof Islands and down by the central Aleutians, but high pressure continuing to dominate for the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians, keeping that precipitation further to the north. The snow line does extend into western portions of the interior part of the state, and we are expecting that snow to make it into the Galena area and up through the Kotzebue Sound area by Point Hope and Point Lay. The Arctic coastline, however, should remain dry for Friday, but as we get into the very far eastern portions of the interior, some isolated snow showers are expected over much of south central Alaska should be out of the precipitation for Friday. Down in the Panhandle, our low is now pushed into the eastern portions of the Gulf where we do see a mix of rain and snow for much of the Panhandle area. A little bit more rain as we get closer towards the Gulf and at lower elevations, whereas higher elevations and areas further inland will see primarily snow. As we move into Saturday, that is going to clear up as our low is pushed well to the southeast. Just some isolated areas of snow showers to the southeast of the Panhandle. And as we look out over mainland Alaska, south central should be pretty clear, but going into the interior part of the state, a mix of rain and snow is expected for much of the central and western portions of the interior. As we get further to the east, expecting that to be primarily snow. As we get up into the Brooks range, it should be primarily snow as well, with some potential for blowing snow conditions, especially through the passes of the Brooks range. Up along the northwestern part of the state, we are expecting to see some snow drifting down through the Kotzebue Sound area, Seward Peninsula, and down into southwest Alaska as well. Troughing behind this system will start to bring some cloud cover for the Pribilof Islands, but precipitation should stay primarily north up in the St. Matthew and St. Lawrence areas. Aleutian Islands should stay out of the precipitation finally on Saturday for some clear skies, especially for the western Aleutians out ahead of high pressure moving into the area. Taking a look now at our temperature forecast, we'll start with Friday morning out over the Aleutian Islands. We have temperatures dropping down to just below 40 degrees for most of the Aleutians, with Alaska getting down to 37 degrees. Out for the Bristol Bay area, temperatures dropping into the mid-20s and then into the mid to lower 20s for the YK Delta area. Macquarie staying a little bit warmer there, dropping down to 28 degrees Friday morning. So you move up to the north, 20s around the Norton Sound area, 23 for Gamble. And then as we get into the Kotzebue Sound area, getting a little bit colder there into the mid-teens. Kotzebue getting down to 16, Shishmaruf at 18 degrees. Single digits along the Arctic coastline. And then down to negative 2 for Arctic Village, coldest for Friday morning. Into the interior part of the state, in the upper teens to lower 20s for most locations. Galena at 19 degrees, McGrath 21. As we get further to the east, a little bit colder into the mid-teens for areas out by Eagle and Northway, down to 15 degrees for Friday morning. Into the south-central locations, down right around 30 degrees for most locations. Colder there in the Copper River Basin. Glen Allen getting down to 20 degrees and warmer as we get down by Kodiak, get up down to 36 degrees. For the southeastern part of the state in the mid-20s for most locations, a little bit warmer as we get by the Gulf Coastline and Yakutat dropping down to 31. Friday afternoon highs will stay in the southeastern portion of the state into the mid-30s for most locations. Haynes getting up to 37 degrees with Sitka getting up to 36. For south central Alaska into the mid 30s to right around 40 degrees. Warmer at Valdez getting up to 45 degrees for a Friday afternoon. Into the interior portions of the state, we're seeing temperatures get into the mid 30s for most everywhere. Colder as we get further to the north as we get into the Brooks Range through the pass, expecting to only get up to 19 degrees. And then in the mid to upper teens for the Arctic coastline, warmer as we get further to the west, Point Hope getting up to 26 degrees. Kotzebue and other areas in the Kotzebue Sound getting up into the upper 20s and in the lower 30s as we drop down to the Norton Sound area. Down in the YK Delta into the mid 30s and the upper 30s as we get to the Bristol Bay area. Temperatures along the Alaska Peninsula getting up into the mid 40s and mid 40s throughout much of the Aleutian Islands. St. Paul getting up to 38 degrees. Lows for Saturday morning out for the Aleutians going to get it down into the mid 30s. That's going to be true as we extend into the Alaska Peninsula and the lower 30s for all of southwest Alaska. So get up towards the Norton Sound area, getting down into the mid to upper 20s, and then in the lower 20s as we get into the Kotzebue Sound area and single digits once again along the Arctic coastline. 
As we drop down to the interior western locations down into the mid 20s, whereas eastern locations down into the lower teens, down in south central Alaska for western locations down into the 20s and eastern locations dropping down into the teens and in the uh, panhandle area down into the mid 20s. For our afternoon highs on Saturday, we're going to get back up to around the lower 40s for the panhandle area, around 40 for south central Alaska, mid 30s for much of the interior and west coast of the state, then right around the mid 20s for the Arctic coastline and 40s for the Aleutian Islands. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For our aviation, we'll start off with a look at our flying weather for Friday morning. We do have some IFR conditions out over the central and western part of the Bering Sea that's starting to move into the central Aleutian Islands as well. Then out over the eastern part of the Bering, we do have some MVFR conditions as we move towards Bristol Bay. As we move further north along the west coast, we are going to start to see some IFR conditions up for the YK Delta into the uh, Norton Sound area, then continued up along the west coast and areas along the Arctic coastline as well. Down in the interior part of the state, northern interior should be MVFR, but as we move to southern portions of the interior and south central Alaska, expecting to see primarily IFR conditions Friday morning. Down in the Panhandle area, VFR conditions are primarily expected. On Friday afternoon, however, MVFR and IFR conditions are going to move into the Panhandle, but there will be some clearing out over south central Alaska where we will see primarily VFR conditions with some MVFR further to the east. Interior part of the state, primarily MVFR with some isolated areas of IFR, and then right along the Arctic coastline, MVFR conditions are expected as well. Down the west coast, a mixture of MVFR and IFR conditions are expected through the Bristol Bay area, and out over much of the Bering Sea, IFR conditions as well. However, down in the Aleutians, the central and eastern Aleutian Islands will be primarily VFR, and that will include the Alaska Peninsula as well. Saturday morning, MVFR and IFR conditions throughout much of the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, with the exception of the Alaska Peninsula as we get further off to the east. Up in the Bristol Bay area, primarily MVFR, but getting more IFR as we move up the west coast of the state through the Point Hope area. Along the Arctic coastline, MVFR and IFR conditions expected. And then down in the interior part of the state, eastern portion should see primarily MVFR, western portions primarily IFR. Down in south central Alaska, as you sit in the valley, we'll see some IFR conditions, but the rest of south central should be VFR. And the panhandle should also primarily be VFR Saturday morning, with the exception of very southern locations where some MVFR conditions are expected. Saturday afternoon in the Panhandle, VFR conditions expected. VFR all the way along the North Gulf Coast to include Kodiak Island, but as we get closer towards the Talkeetna Mountains and for the Alaska Range, we are expecting primarily MVFR conditions, and then IFR as we get into the interior part of the state. Eastern portions of the Arctic coastline should be VFR, but as we get out by western portions, we should see primarily IFR, and then Quite a few areas of IFR down the west coast through the Bristol Bay area. Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutian Islands expecting to see primarily MVFR conditions, and that includes the Pribilof Islands as well and much of the Bering Sea. For the passes, starting up north, Anaktubik Pass, MVFR conditions are expected. Attigan Pass should be IFR with some VFR conditions on the north side. Lake Clark should be MVFR, where Merrill will be IFR. Then Rainy Pass will be IFR improving to MVFR conditions in the afternoon. Windy Pass will also start off IFR and improve to marginal conditions in the afternoon. Isabel Pass will stay IFR throughout the day on Friday as well as Mentasta Pass. Tina Pass will start off IFR and improve to MVFR in the afternoon on Friday. Portage will also start IFR and improve to MVFR in the afternoon. Chilkoot and White will both start off VFR and then drop down to IFR conditions later in the afternoon. For our freezing level surface freezing line, Rides up right along the North Gulf Coast from the Panhandle area through Prince William Sound, down through the Alaska Peninsula, and then out into the eastern and eventually northern parts of the Bering Sea. We have an area of warmer air pushing up along the west coast with that system moving in, bringing freezing levels of 8,000 feet to the YK Delta coastline. And as we look at our icing, we can see that we have below 8,000 feet by the western Aleutians, below 14,000 feet for the west coast and central Aleutians through the Alaska Peninsula, below 8,000 feet along the Arctic coastline, and below 11,000 feet for the Panhandle. For our jet stream, 170 miles per hour out of a westerly direction over the St. Lawrence Island area, dropping down to 140 miles per hour as we get closer towards the Anchorage area and out of a northwesterly direction. Further to the north, we have westerly flow throughout all of mainland Alaska, with speeds dropping down to around 70 miles per hour as we get up along the Arctic coastline. Out over the Panhandle, we're seeing speeds around uh, 50 miles per hour and as high as 120 miles per hour to that northwesterly direction out over the Gulf of Alaska. 
dropping down to 9,000 feet starting out west. Strongest winds out to around 100 miles per hour by the central Aleutian Islands out of a southwesterly direction. Dropping down to around 50 miles per hour, becoming more westerly as we get over the YK Delta area. Dropping down to 20 to 35 as we get towards northern portions of the state and around 30 miles per hour for much of the interior part of the state. Stronger by Kodiak Island where we will see speeds 45 to 60 miles per hour out of northwesterly direction. Weaker flow over the panhandle 20 to 35 miles per hour out of a westerly direction. Then for 3,000 feet on Friday starting off out over the western areas again 80 miles per hour in our strongest locations out of a southwesterly direction and then out over mainland Alaska dropping down to 20 to 30 miles per hour for most locations that are not in the southwest. For our turbulence, all associated with the Aleutians and southwest Alaska, below 6,000 feet for areas around Bristol Bay, below 5,000 feet for... Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and today I'm privileged to introduce Dr. Uccellini, the director of the United States National Weather Service. Welcome back to Alaska, sir. Thank you, Dave. Glad to be here. Thanks. Uh, prior to being the leader of the National Weather Service, uh, your work included an extensive look at snowstorms across the northeastern United States. And these are the types of storms that can bring some of the country's largest cities to its knees. Uh, tell me a little bit about your fascination with snow. Well, as far back as I can remember, I've, I've always been interested in, in weather, mm -hmm. uh, growing up as a, as a kid in, uh, on Long Island, New York, and was particularly fascinated by uh, snowstorms. Um, why they occurred. The distribution of snow was very varied across the entire region. The rain snow line, all those things fascinated me right from the get-go. And um, I was interested in knowing how they worked, um, how the forecast worked, or more often than not, didn't work uh, uh, one way or the other. And that drove me, um, um, that interest continued to build and um, drove me through high school right into college uh, wanting to be a meteorologist. Okay, that's a fascinating story, and I think every meteorologist has a weather story like that in some way. Right. Uh, due to Alaska's size and the proximity to the North Pole, sometimes it's difficult to detect and analyze the weather patterns over Alaska. Uh, what's the National Weather Service doing to improve that weather detection? Well, uh, observations uh, in this type of an environment is, is a big challenge, uh, whether it's um, from space um, or uh, from what we call in-situ observations from the from the ground or within the systems. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, uh, satellites have been playing an increasing role in providing uh, the big picture, uh, not only from a visual sense and what you see is occurring, um, but also from providing the data for numerical models that then are used to actually predict the weather. Uh, Alaska is actually pretty well uh, positioned with respect to polar orbiting satellites since mm -hmm. you get a, um, a, a faster return of those satellites over your particular area. And in fact, the, uh, the polar satellite system is the backbone for the observations that we use in our models, uh, especially our global models, and they're particularly important uh, for observing weather features that affect Alaska. Alaskans live and die by the weather every day. And one of the strategic goals of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the National Weather Service is to develop a more weather-ready nation. What does it mean for Alaskans to be weather-ready? Well, the, the strategic outcome is based on uh, people being ready, responsive, and therefore resilient to uh, the increasing uh, threats to extreme weather events. Uh, those threats are related to um, not only the nature of the events, but the fact that we're becoming more vulnerable to them as we have more people, more infrastructure uh, that could be um, affected by these events. So we have to ensure that the observations we make for situational awareness, the forecasts we make for people to take the proper responses um, are connected uh, to people's uh, actions, uh, the response to these events, so that uh, they will be more resilient uh, to um, uh, what's uh, facing them. Um, you know, there are examples with respect to hurricanes, uh, more people living along the coastline takes longer to evacuate. We have to make better forecasts with longer lead times, but we also have to communicate the threat so people will actually take action to avoid those storms. Up here you have, um, as in other parts of the United States, an increasing threat related to fire, mm -hmm. uh, um, as there are more people living in fire-prone areas. Um, we have to ensure that our forecasts are good, uh, that we don't have 
uh, false alarms that make people not react to uh, uh, the forecast when, in fact, they should. Mm -hmm. Um, but we also have to be able to communicate the threat and make sure that we're working with the partners in the emergency management community uh, so that um, communities uh, and right down to individuals will actually take the proper responses in the face of these events. So that's the strategic goal. There are a lot of challenges for us in terms of improving forecasts but also improving our communication skills and linking with the emergency management communities that are actually out there. Uh, trying to protect lives and mitigate property loss. So a huge partnership effort going forward. Uh, that's, that's one of the important keys for the success of uh, meeting the strategic goal. Okay. Well, one of the things you're talking about was uh, understanding the, the weather information we're getting back from the computers, weather modeling, and you did a lot of work with that in some of your prior, uh, prior positions with the Environmental Prediction Center there, the National Center for Environmental Prediction. Um, what can you tell us about recent improvements in that weather modeling, and you're using a the polar orbiters is kind of a, a source of information that started right. that process. Well, you know, first of all, we have to recognize that everything you see, you read, and hear about weather, climate, or ocean forecasts mm -hmm. are all driven by numerical models. Now, mm -hmm. it, it really has been the, uh, the revolution in our forecast process uh, in the last part of, um, of the 20th century. Uh, the success of that numerical enterprise is based on three factors big computers, mm -hmm. um, po uh, global data, not just local data, but you have to have a global data set, and then the models themselves, the science that's behind the models and in running the models um, in an operational mode. So we're working to improve all three of those components. Uh, we um, upgraded our computers last year. We're, we're going through another upgrade right, even as I speak. Uh, we'll be upgrading from 200 trillion calculations per second to 700 trillion mm, yeah. calculations per second by January of 2015. Uh, this increase in the computer will allow us to run what we call Earth system models. It's not just the atmosphere, it's the atmosphere, ocean, mm -hmm. ice, mm -hmm. which is obviously very important up here, and land models that are all coupled together okay. at higher resolution. So you need the big computers you need the uh, science uh, that allows us to run these models and run them in a parallel mode and that they're coupled so that the ocean effects could affect the atmosphere and vice versa, mm -hmm. as an example. Uh, and then the global observations are absolutely critical. And um, over the last 20, 30 years, they've become more dependent upon the satellite systems um, and especially the uh, polar orbiting satellites, which help drive the, uh, the observations needed for those models, whether they be atmospheric observations, land, ice observations. Um, we're driving more and more of that from satellites now that feed into these models and produce forecasts with extended lead times. Now, out, you know, for extreme events especially, we're, we're seeing a much improved forecasts out in the four, five, six, seven, and even eight day range, which is gets us back to Weather Ready Nation because if you're going to get ready for a storm event, you want those consistent forecasts approaching that event from day seven, six, five, four, three, mm -hmm. so you can take the actions several days in advance that can help mitigate the property loss and, and, and protect uh, your livelihood. Okay, all part of the mission of protecting life and property. Dr. Uccellini, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And speaking to Alaskans and sharing how the National Weather Service is working for Alaska and the nation. Wish you safe travels around the 49th. Enjoy your time here, sir. And for Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And now, marine weather around Alaska. For our marine section, we'll start off with a quick look at the ice edge. Stretching through the northern part of the Bering Sea into the eastern part of the Bering, we have had some pushback of the ice in the western and northwestern parts of the Bering Sea as we've had some southerly flow out there. We also have some leads breaking in the ice along the west coast of the state. Those are filling in with uh, some new ice, but be mindful if you're out in those areas that there are some leads in the ice. And then as we move forward in time, we are expecting with that next system coming up, some southerly winds over eastern portions of the Bering helping to push the ice edge back to the north. However, over western portions of the Bering, some northerly winds starting to bring the ice edge back further to the south in those locations. 
Taking a look now for our Thursday in southeast Alaska in the inside waters, northerly winds 15 to 20 knots, and that's going to become westerly at 10 knots as we get further to the south. Out over the Gulf, northwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots, seas as high as 4 feet. Then on Friday, inside waters, southeasterly winds 10 to 15 knots. Then out over the Gulf, westerly winds 15 knots, becoming southeasterly as we get further to the north near Yakutat area. Out over south central Alaska on Thursday, in the uh, Prince William Sound area, southerly winds around 10 knots. So get out in the Gulf, we're going to have some variable winds in the northern part of the Gulf becoming south 15 to 20 knots as we get closer towards the Barren Islands. Out over the Cook Inlet area, we have northeasterly winds starting at 10 knots in the northern sections, uh, become increasing as we move further to the south up to as high as 25 knots as we get closer towards St. Augustine Island and that's going to become more southeasterly. Then on Friday, westerly winds throughout the Cook Inlet area 10 to 20 knots in Cook Inlet, as high as 30 knots as we get closer towards the Barren Islands. Then westerly flow in the Gulf of Alaska, 25 to 30 knots there, becoming more northerly as we get by Prince William Sound, 15 knots in that location. For the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island on Thursday, in the Chelikoff Straits, southwesterly winds, 15 knots. On the other side of Kodiak Island, also 15 knots. But as we move further to the southwest, 20 knots and becoming more northerly as we get closer towards Sand Point. Seas as high as 7 feet, and then on the Bering side, 15 to 20 knots out of a westerly direction. On Friday, continuing out of the west for the Bering side, 25 to 35 knots, strongest as we get further to the west. Then on the uh, Pacific side, westerly winds, 25 to 30 knots. That's going to include areas around Kodiak Island as well. Out over the Aleutian Islands on Thursday, we do have primarily westerly winds for the central and eastern Aleutians, 15 to 25 knots, strongest on the Bering side. And as we move out by the western Aleutian Islands, southerly winds, 35 to 45 knots, with seas as high as 14 feet, strongest further to the west. On Friday, winds and seas picking up quite a bit for the western Aleutian Islands, 45 knots out of a southwesterly direction, seas now as high as 31 feet by the western Aleutians. So we move to the central Aleutians, storm force winds 50 knots out of a southerly direction on the Pacific side, or on the Bering side, and then dropping down to around 25 to 35 knots as we get closer towards the eastern Aleutians. Seas as high as 19 feet on the Pacific side for the central Aleutians. Along the west coast of the state, southerly winds 20 knots up in the Norton Sound area, and then 25 to 30 along the rest of the west coast. Seas as high as 13 feet by St. Matthew Island. On Friday, we do have southerly winds along the west coast continuing up by St. Lawrence Island. We have around 15 knots. Stronger as we get further to the south, 30 knots around Saint, or around Nunavik Island, and then 45 knots of a southwesterly direction by the Pribilof Island. Seas as high as 19 feet. Along the Arctic coastline, we have southerly winds 15 to 20 knots, and then down the west coast of the state, 15 knots out of that southerly direction, picking up by the Bering Strait around 25 knots there on Thursday. Then on 